Hey guys, Keith here. Welcome back. This is our build review on the Axial RBX10 Rift. Hey guys, what's up? So yeah, this is Axial's RBX10 Rift. It is a 2.2 RC um, scale rock bouncer. It's got a wheelbase of, I believe, 15 and a half inches with an overall track width of 12 inches outside to outside on the tire or wheel, however you want to look at it. Uh, it's a pretty nice unit. Sitting three and a quarter, three and three quarter inch of belly clearance underneath. It has trailing arm rear suspension with a nice big sway bar and some shocks that obviously mount to the cage and to the trailing arms being trailing arm suspension. Uh, it does got the stainless steel links in the front. I think they're stainless steel, pretty sure they are. So the stainless steel links in the front, um, it is a solid axle truck. It's not independent or anything in the front, like some of the rigs out there, and it is a rock bouncer. Um, it does come with three differentials. You can pick where to put the, or three differentials in the truck. So it's got front, center, and rear. So you can make it all wheel drive, four wheel drive, lock the rear, lock the middle, or lock the front also too with an included uh, steel locker that they give you. Uh, we suggest locking at least the center to start with, and once you start beefing it up from there, maybe get out and lock the other ones, depending also what you're gonna do. If you're planning on rock bouncing it, um, it's just suggested to leave them open and just use a little more throttle, a little more momentum, and just send it up over the top, but you're definitely gonna wanna have the middle one locked up. Um, at all, like all for sure. It shouldn't have a diff in the center. Um, as far as we're concerned, that's more race truck stuff when you're flying through there and you're landing on the throttle, on the back tires, and you're sending it. So I don't know what their angle with that was, but who cares? They give you a locker, so take care of that one out of the gate. Uh, let's talk about the build. So as you can see here, when you open the box, we have bags A, B, C, D, all that. Inside the bags, um, they are labeled out. A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and the manual follows along, open bag 1, and then bag 1, A, A1, sorry, A2, A3, A4, and follow along, and once you're done, you push all your parts to the side. Now, the nice thing about that is it's super convenient because you're not looking and measuring screws as much. You still got to measure, make sure you got the right one, and you're not... What we used to dread on the old axial kits was picking through the uh, parts trees and cutting them off. And one of those parts trees, I think it was like 80041 or something, it would always just, you couldn't find that one and you'd waste hours. And then the screws would come in like, in like bags, but you didn't need them all at once. You needed some now and some later and some right at the very end that came at the beginning. And no fault to anybody's, that's just how production works on the kits. Um, it's gotten a lot better over the past few years. Uh, a few other companies have kind of started this build method with everything being nice and pre-bagged and all. So the build went smooth, no complaints, everything fit great. Um, yeah, Let's talk about the axles. They're big, they're beefy. I like the servo mount where they have it kind of sitting right here. I'll get a better shot when it's not in the kind of shadowy darks here. Uh, they got it mounted in there, kind of laid it back, so it's not going to take it such a bashing on the front, kind of rolled it back behind the edge of the axle a little bit, right? So it's kind of nice to see. But the differentials, I watched a few other YouTubers on it, as I always do, support the community, and uh, I went out and watched what they're doing and how they did it. Now, one is I noticed a lot of them are using, and even Axial on the new SCX6 is putting in that 2 million weight silicone oil as gear lubrication and it's not a great gear lubrication as it has um zero molly in it um from what i what i've read it's got zero molly so it's got no lubricating uh properties once you get to like that thickness maybe the thinner stuff works okay but once you get up in there it's no good they give you it to pack the diffs in but they don't talk about greasing them and we've seen a couple other videos where they just spoon that stuff in they didn't grease it and they ran it and they said oh it's a bit tight but it'll wear itself in and you don't want your diff wearing itself in it should be done before you put it in the vehicle and it should be smooth and buttery it shouldn't be notchy and wear itself in that's not a thing so uh we ended up having to take all that out of the diff cup 
wash the gift cups out really well. Uh, I got some alcohol, washed it all out, took a, uh, a brush, washed all the stuff out from between the teeth. And then we put it together with some, um, assembled it dry, put everything in there. We did put oil on the back side of the output shafts where they go through the rubber bearing into the caps. There's a little metal um, insert in the back of the cup. You wanna make sure you got some lube in there. We lubed up the, the teeth, we ran everything, we screwed the diff shut. I took a drill bit, uh, a drill with a flat end in it, spun it, held the diff, spun it, no problem both ways, no buying, no locking, ran fantastic. Uh, when we did that without the grease in it, just the um, locker, two million weight locker, silicone stuff, it would run for a few um, revolutions and then completely bind up and the thing would just twist in my hand and almost cut your hand open, right? So uh, that was a problem that we wanted to deal with before we put it together because if you go out with that and you get one wheel bound up and this guy wants to spin at a billion mile an hour and your diff can, it's just gonna shatter, it's gonna blow apart and the guys are gonna say that they're having, you know, they're gonna blame it on weak gears, which we've seen a lot of videos on. So with a little bit of time, you can make these things work fantastic. One another thing too is the seating of the diff cup. If it's out just a little bit, it's gonna be horrible on these on this thing. Any differential, and these ones are not the greatest. The edge of the diff cup where it comes up, we trim the ed edge of it with a knife so it sat nicely because it does cup inside the teeth of the gear on the bevel gear. So we want to make sure that was sitting. And then you can actually see on the seal, there is a mark left on the seal uh, when it's against the bevel gear from the cup when it goes in. And if it's giving you trouble, just take it apart and make sure you see that little kind of cut line from the molded seal in the plastic all the way evenly around. Uh, when we were first tightening it up, we, it was only touching on like one half when we were running into kind of binding issues just in the differential itself. Uh, we actually had to take uh, take it out, tap, 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 tighten the screws, tap, 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 tighten the screws on the bench with a backside a pair of uh, needle nose hammer. But we tapped it down, tighten the screws until you couldn't tighten the screws no more. We put it in, we got the discs working good. And then once we're happy with everything, we took the discs out, we filled them with the locking uh, fluid with the grease in it, let it sit, put it all back together, and we think it's gonna be good. So um, just take your time, it's a pain in the butt. We had the truck pretty much together and we just weren't happy with them so we ripped apart the diffs. Um, and then that brings me to the transmission. From the differentials, let's go to the transmission. Next logical step, I would say. Um, there's two options. You can build the transmission as a single speed uh, to which, what we've done here, or you can build it into being a two speed. Now, if you build it into single speed, that is more what the truck is aimed at, rock balancing, going fast. If you build it into uh, two speed, it, or as a single speed, sorry, it will be in a second gear. Um, so if you put in the capability to shift gears, it's gonna shift to from uh, you know second gear down to first, like four low, from four high down to four low, so you can go rock crawling. So if you do plan on going rock crawling, you are gonna have to put in the um, second gear unit. So you'll need a servo and you need to put this in. Now, the only thing, the reason why we didn't put it in is the two speeds are kind of sloppy. You got that round thing with the four fingers on it and they go together and they have to like, you know what I mean? They, they get that slop. This thing is like motor motor right there, right? So when she comes back on drag brake, go up, let off, drag brake, she's gonna stop right there on that big four pole, no problem. Um, without that, it's gonna go up, it's gonna roll, you're gonna go up a hill, let off throw, it's gonna roll back here and then catch. And depending if you're in a comp or whatever you're doing, uh, that could either push you back off the edge or you could get a uh, reverse point actually, depending how far you roll back. I know some comps don't like it when you drive up the hill, let the truck come back on its own, it's cheating, but you didn't back up, right? But hey, whatever, another story. So yeah, so if you're gonna, if you wanna go fast, you're gonna keep it a rock bouncer like it is, you might as well just leave this out. You won't, it feels sloppy with the two speeds, so it's cool that they have that, but we're not gonna run that. Uh, we just like it to feel nice and tight and crisp. Okay, so inside the transmission, you're gonna wanna make sure you grease everything nicely. We used uh, Cal RC Utter Butter uh, throughout the inside of the transmission. I just load it up on a toothbrush and I just brush it onto the gears. Uh, and then I put a little bit on, but I make sure I brush it all over the gears to get the full, all the nooks and crannies, and then I'll put some excess in there. Uh, another thing too on these trucks, if you don't want them to sound like a meat grinder, it's got a huge like three inch 
uh, metal spur gear in it that's like a quarter inch wide with holes drilled in it that goes against a 17 tooth mod one pinion so if you don't put a little bit of grease between those they're going to just sing a song you don't want to hear uh they're pretty loud so just a touch of grease in there make sure your your uh, your, mo your motor mesh is nice uh you'll see here in the video of uh us getting that done I was watching another video on YouTube like I always do before we do a build to make sure we're not just dawdling around wasting your guys time when we're figuring all this junk out and a lot of guys were saying um, the motor the gear mesh was tight no matter what they did for positioning or something like that so I, I don't feel that's accurate with having 17 motor holes and four holes on the motor We're gonna find out right now. So, like, it's not tight. I can still get the gear to slide past. It's a little tighter than I would like. But if you just go into the holes that the manual literally tells you right here, it's totally fine. So, you just come over here, pro noob will fix you up. You don't, don't worry about those guys. That's perfectly fine. It's a guy. A little bit of click, just like we like to see. We hold this gear, and I rock this gear as long as I can feel a little bit of clickety clack. I don't use the paper. I don't use any of that stupid stuff. It's so stupid, Josie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the power plant that we chose to go with for this unit. Uh, we decided to go with the Castle Mamba X with the. Um, 1512 uh, 8 scale buggy motor with the 5 millimeter shaft and it is 1800 kV. Uh, the motor is very tight to fit in there. Um, we'll put a little clip after I'm dead talking of us wrestling that big can in there. Now if you're going to go with a big motor like that you're going to be stuck with the uh, 17 tooth pinion. There's no room to go in or out. If I go in I'm hitting the transmission and I'm already to come out you'll see that we had to cut away some of the material of the uh, link towers to actually tuck that motor right in there. Uh, took a bit of work to get it in there. Nothing crazy. Guys are putting the 1515 in. I think it's a bigger motor. I'm not sure. The 1512 is pretty big. Uh, I think they might be about the same size relatively. So, uh, but yeah, we went to 1800 kV. Um, it still has enough power where I can balloon these tires up, just pinning it on the floor and leave black marks for about six feet across my basement floor. Um, so it's going to get down. Now, I don't need it to do 65 mile an hour for rock balancing. Rock balancing is just come up to your thing and kind of just momentum and launch it over the thing. It's not about just sending it. That's, it's not, that's rock racing. I think those guys are nuts, but. Okay, so we finished uh, just putting the motor and transmission in. Um, this is a big four pole motor. Uh, it's a lot bigger than uh, the stock RTR motor that goes in it. So you can see we had to make some relief cuts here. I just used my hobby blade and we put it in, we marked where it was touching. So I cut from here back down to here and then from here back down to here. You don't want to cut away too much, but you have to sacrifice a little bit. As you can see from this side to this side, it's not a lot. We took like just, we 45 the corner pretty much down, cut that nice and straight there. And then the same, we just kind of scooped it through here. And then right here, these little webs, one, two, three, underneath the motor, because he's a bigger motor and diameter, uh, is actually sitting against those. So we just knocked that down, super simple. Um, use your hobby knife. Uh, you can use a Dremel if you want, but it's not as clean looking. With a knife, you can make it super pretty, super clean. And just, yeah, knock those down underneath. That's one part I found. And what I was doing was setting everything in. Now, the front, like the transmission and the skid plate are a tight fit. I found starting on the motor side and working your way over actually gets it to set better. If you come this way over, it gets caught up in the middle. So you get that set there, just pops right in. And then I was taking a piece of mo uh, paper that came in the motor bag and then you can slide this underneath and make sure that you're like once you're in everything's down that you're clear apparently we're still touching somewhere underneath yeah see right here there's a little side mark a little side guy i gotta cut off 
just like I did in the front, I beveled that guy out. I didn't bevel that corner out, so now it's sitting on there. And then there's probably this edge right here I want to knock out. The idea is just not to have anything when you tighten it up, the forcing on your motor and putting your, your gear mesh gears funny, because they'll be loud and wear funny and such. So you want to make sure nothing's touching the motor. Just being held in by a piece of tinfoil is good enough. Tell him, Jesse. Tinfoil, bro. There you go, that clicks in nice. You can visually see now that we're no longer touching in there. This guy slides back underneath just nicely. All the way through, we're good. All the way back to this corner, it's good. I can get in behind the motor right here. So it's in, it's good, we're done. We can lock that down, put it in. A uh, couple of these go into the motor plate. Make sure you lock tight those screws. They go up into the motor plate. And the rest are just plastic into the, or binding into the plastic. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, power plant covered, power in the power plant. We went with the uh, Spectrum or Smart Spectrum battery, 5,004S uh, milliamp battery. Um, yes, it does fit and there is room left over in the battery box. I know the battery box description for the vehicle is actually listed as being smaller than this battery is being listed on the website but there is just a little bit of room i probably got three millimeters left front to back and two millimeters three millimeter side to side so you can go a little bit bigger uh this is a 50c battery um we bought the uh, ESC motor, battery, and receiver on the same day, so we had to save a little bit of money. So we went with a 50C instead of a 100C. Yeah, so the battery's about 30 bucks more up here in Canada. And remember guys, we are in Canada, so prices are gonna fluctuate, and you're gonna, might be different for the area you live in. Just remember that, please. Um, yeah, so a steering servo, we went with a Reefs 777. Uh, we like to use uh, reefs in all our products. They ain't paying us. We like to buy the products. We like quality. Um, I've been a high-tech guy for years, and uh, I've got no complaints about still running high-techs or reefs uh, and just send it with those. The 777 I had laying around from another build, and it just fit the application nicely. Big, bad tires and such like that. So that worked good. Uh, we're running it with my DX5 Rugged Radio with a Spectrum SR315 radio. And I do have the third channel hooked up to my Mamba X on the live wire so I can control my drag brake from my radio all the way from zero to 215% oh, cranked up or whatever their max crawler is, which is nice because with that big motor, it's really snappy on and off that drag brake. So you can actually just fine tune it to a perfect percentage uh, on the fly with the radio, or you can shut it off. Like if you want to go jump something, you can shut it off. You can turn on 5%, you know, 6%, just whatever is setting, is, is appealing for what you're driving on that day. I know a lot of guys like to say, oh, I just set it at the house, one and done. And it's like, yeah, but the conditions change everywhere you go. So with all my Mamba X's, that is the one feature I will take on a Mamba X over any ESC out there. Um, I know I was watching another YouTube video, they called Castle Creations um middle middle of the market escs and i i i don't know i think they deserve a little bit better than that they've been around for a really really long time and i've never blown one up i've never had problems i've blown up the ones that they've made for hpi and other companies just rebranded them but i haven't blown up a castle in any of my stuff so uh big fan big fan uh yeah so what else do we want to talk about here uh, the interior, injection molded again. It's got this nice big cutout for the ESC sitting in the middle. Okay, so uh, yeah, that, uh, the hood opens on the front as you just seen, which is nice. You've got one battery strap in the front, and then the battery actually hooks underneath the firewall if you're running a big battery like this. And if you're not, they actually give you spacers for the battery box to run different size packs. But remember guys, if you're gonna put in a 6S capable Mamba X and an eight scale buggy motor, you're gonna want at least five, uh, 5,000 um, milliamp battery or a five amp hour battery. Cause if you put something in there like a 2200 and you pull the trigger on this, that battery's gonna explode. Trust me on that. <laughs> so, but yeah, so yeah, we're happy with it. We got our discs working fantastic. They're still nice and tight enough. We can get some spin rotation. 
but you can see they're nice and smooth. If we turn them quick, it spins the drive line, does what a diff should do. Um, yeah, as you can see, we painted the rims kind of this red, white, and blue kind of speckled paint job. We did the box art on the truck as the cage was kind of this red, white, and blue theme. That is Axial's graphics on the side. We, they came with it, which is nice. We just put them on, painted a racing blue. Um, only thing I do is put a couple Mamba stickers on here. The rest is all them. A couple of re-stickers on the back just to represent there. And spent eight hours painting the interior when I only meant to spend two. But, you know, that kind of thing happens. So um, next up is I'm going to take this thing outside. Uh, we're actually getting into some decent weather. So tomorrow is going to be minus three. And uh, coming from minus 30 for the last couple of months, it's going to be awesome to get outside and uh, get some running in. So we're going to throw this guy down. And we wanted to be like all the cool kids out there, so we bought some of the Proline Black Mamba tires and wheels. I'll throw those together and I'll give you guys the part number once I get them up. I'm just painting the inside wheels to kind of match these ones. Uh, these are the white with the red and blue speckle in them. Because uh, we named this thing uh, Freedom Units, actually, because it was the red, white, and blue. America's red, white, and blue, our good old neighbor down south there. So we decided to call this guy Freedom Units. So when we did all the measurements, we made sure we did everything in freedom units when we measured it instead of metric so um yeah we'll see you guys